This podcast is brought to you by our friends at Anchor by Spotify. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No specialty training or equipment needed. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast worldwide on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, like I've been saying, Anchor is totally free. It's free. Download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started and make your podcast dreams a reality. That's anchor.fm. What are you waiting for? Download the app. Well, it's a big show. Welcome to the Fade Route. It's a big bad show tonight. With DNZ. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome to this week's episode of The Fade Route with DNZ. I am D. We got a great show for you tonight. Danny Dimes delivers. Lamar doesn't travel with the team to Cincinnati. And we chat about the midseason MVP in basketball. But we'll begin today's show with the rise of the Dallas Cowboys and the departure of Tom Brady. Both of us had this game wrong. But who could blame us for betting with Tom Brady, the GOAT, the legend, the greatest ever doing, right? Brady's stat line wasn't terrible. The Bucks were in an uphill battle all game. Dallas was on Brady the minute they got off the bus. So Z, what will Brady do now? And can Dallas keep this going? <clears throat> well, what can Dallas... I'm going to address your second question first. Can Dallas keep this going? Not likely. This weekend, they're going in to face the San Francisco 49ers, who are a much more formidable team than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All due respect to Tampa Bay for winning your division, but winning your division at 8 and 9 is not great. So, when you look at the totality of things, yeah, Brady's overall numbers don't look bad, but when you take into account that he threw 66 times, (laughs) <laughs> 66 times to get that you know they, they like to call you like to call people compilers that's a compiler right there like numbers look great like Rafael Palmero was the perfect example of a compiler before the steroids Tom Brady had a compiler performance on Sunday he had to throw he got baited into a pick in the end zone <sighs> Tampa Bay could not <laughs> t- Tampa Bay could not stop Dallas. You don't think he was trying to throw that ball away? I thought he was trying to ball throw that ball away. I don't know. The only I, don't thing think, I-, I don't think he got baited in that one. I think there's two things I thought on that play. It looked like he was trying to throw the ball away and he didn't get enough umph on it to get it out of the back of the end zone. Now that he realized that there were two Dallas guys there. The other thought was is I thought I think he thought Godwin was gonna make a move to go to the back of the end zone and nobody's been on the same page with him all year. But I don't, I don't really think uh, now he got fooled on that play. I don't know, but the results are there. The results are <laughs> that it was picking the end zone. He was routinely short on his passes. Uh, he was skipping him in by a couple yards. It just, it hasn't been smooth. It was not, it wasn't a Brady-like performance and He's 45 years old, you know. It, it it it's safe to say that father time is coming. Now, is father time coming immediately this coming off season? 
He should have come last season. In reality, Tom Brady should not have come back this year. I think we're all in agreement on that. He hasn't looked the same. You can, you can kind of speculate as to whether or not his decision ultimately cost him his marriage to Giselle. So, it's definitely been a roller coaster type year for Tom Brady. And it just, it was not a clean game. They miss Ronald Jones. They, they have no semblance of running game. None at all. Leonard Fournette didn't do shit. But he wore his playoff Lenny hoodie before the game. <laughs> well, <laughs> playoff Lenny was part of a rushing attack that only rushed the ball 12 times. So, that's on Byron Leftwich, that's on Todd Bowles. A lot of that is you to such a piss poor start on defense that you have to shelve the running game because you have to stay in the game. You have to throw to stay in the game. <coughs> so, you know, it, it's just an imbalance. Dallas was the better team. Dallas showed up. 35 attempts on, or 35 rushes for 128 total yards. Dak Prescott had a game. The only, the only blemish was Maher. Like, that was the only blemish for the Dallas Cowboys with Maher. But they brought in a kicker this week to maybe push Maher and see if they can cure this yips. Did they? I don't, think the they yips. I don't think they did. Yeah, there's a uh, Vizcaino. They brought in Vizcaino to push him. Oh, the old baseball so. player? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's a hell of a time to develop the case of the yips. But um, I got to say, where does Tom Brady go from here? I think he goes home for now. And he really thinks about what he did last year, what he intended to do last year, what he ended up doing, and does he have the stick to itiveness to actually make it longer than a month in retirement? Yeah, I mean, I disagree with you. I, I think he had enough to come back this year. They were uh, a play away from beating the Rams in that divisional game and going to the NFC title game. Um, you know, this team just failed, like, on all all around this season. I mean, they couldn't run. They couldn't stop anybody. People were running wide open last night. Like, I could have hit those guys. Like, there, mm-hmm. there is nobody within any yards. Uh, they had all day to throw the ball. They, It was it, for, for a, a head coach who prides himself on defense, and the defense has stars on it. You got Vita Vea. You got David. You got... You got all these guys uh, on this team. Nobody came to play. Um, You know, the team was just awful all season, averaging under 20 points a game on offense. People running wrong routes, dropping the ball, unable to run the ball. You mentioned Tom skipping it in. But unlike you, I do think he can still rip it. I think he can still throw. I think Tom would benefit in this age with a, a strong running game, a better offensive line. I think he can he, – he's not going to win a game where he has to throw the ball 66 times. He's going to win a game where he throws it 28 times, 20 times, 34 times. And I think there are places he can still go do that. They're saying that there's three teams that are interested. I think we all know Vegas is one of them. I think the 49ers are going to call too, especially if they can give Lance another year. Um, I think he plays one more season. He didn't get divorced. He didn't divorce his wife. For it to end like this, for him to be one and out, and and even in the press conference uh, after the game, you know, he kind of said his goodbyes. You know, he's pretty much thanking everybody, and and when he thanked everybody for greeting him and giving him a warm welcome when he got to Tampa, I mean, he kind of knew it was over, and I wouldn't expect him to go back. I don't think he should go back. I think that'd be a foolish decision. Um, but now as far as Dallas is concerned, uh, you know, Dak has just been up and down all the season. Um, I have to imagine if they're going to win against the 49ers, they've got to exploit the 49ers secondary because that's the weakest part of the Niners, uh, which Dallas can do. They show they can do that um, against Tampa. The problem, though, Z, is that, you know, out of all the teams remaining in the playoffs, Dallas's offense is the least creative, right? There's no wrinkles in that game. There's no Zeke Elliott throwing like a halfback pass. 
there's no like uh we're gonna do ring around the rosy and then we're gonna run to the ball and then we're gonna you know we're gonna run on the ball and then run a trick play like there's nothing there are straight up and down the packers from like 2006 offense like that's what they're doing you know and i you might have to get a little creative to beat the 49ers especially if you're down um but if they try to beat the 49ers in the front seven, that's a losing battle. The X factor to me is Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn's a hell of a coach. I know, I know the man. He's a good guy. He knows his stuff. And I have to imagine he's going to draw up something very dirty for Brock Bird. But Kyle Shanahan gets paid too. So that's the one thing. They have something for... Kyle Shanahan has something for Dan Quinn. So, it's a chess match. That's the chess match that I'm looking for. If you're looking for a player chess match, it's Micah Parsons, right? He's the Swiss Army knife. He's the guy who lines up on the defensive end. He's the one who lines up as a linebacker. He's the one that gets maneuvered around the chessboard in order to kind of make that defense go. So, like, that is what I'm looking forward to seeing, whether that's whether that's um, in the backfield or if he's matching up on a guy like Debo, like Kittle. Like, I'm looking for position matchups for Parsons to see how that's going to work. But I think that I, I think the Niners will be ready for the Cowboys. Like you said, the Cowboys are not creative at all. Now, they don't have necessarily have the personnel to be creative. They don't have a player as super talented as Patrick Mahomes. They don't have a wideout who has the ability to throw the ball, right? So you can't run, really do like a, a, a wideout pass or, you know, a reverse, like a double reverse, like what they were trying to do in Minnesota with Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins, but it got snuffed out. Like, they don't... The, the Cowboys don't have that kind of personnel. It's a very meat and potatoes. It's very straightforward. For all of the Kellen Moore gets, he really does run a pretty vanilla offense. And it's going to be up to Dak Prescott because I doubt that Pollard and Zeke are going to get much on the ground. I really don't think that they're going to... I really don't think that they're going to be successful. I think they're going to dare Dak Prescott to beat him. And Dak also led the league in picks this year. So he's, you know, he's aggressive. I mean, he's not Josh Allen aggressive to the point of being stupid. Some of them were tip balls. Some of them were, you know, jumped routes. But they're looking to exploit Dak Prescott. Like that is going to be, that's going to be the ticket to victory for the San Francisco 49ers. Making real quick, Dak, real quick. Making Dak do it. Who makes, who makes the all-pro rookie team? Is it uh, Cody Pickett? Or is it, uh, I mean, Kenny, is it Kenny Pickett? Or is it Brock Purdy? I mean, Cody Pickett was great. Uh, he was fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, he's got a hell of a deep ball. But um, it's hard to say, right? Because neither one of them played the full season. Right? You had in the beginning you had uh, the Steelers were mired in Mitch, and then you know Brock Purdy didn't have to do anything until Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. But I think just on recency bias alone and the story of Mr. Irrelevant, I think that they would take Brock Purdy over Kenny Pickett. Now, as far as who's a better pro, who has the better potential, there's a reason why Kenny Pickett was taken in the first round. There's a, there's a reason why that the Pittsburgh Steelers made that move. Brock Purdy, he was a little garnish. They, <laughs> they, 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 you know, he's not the stake. He wasn't the stake. Now he is. But at the time, he was just like, we, we need a body. You'll do. Now the you'll do in the playoffs. But I'm gonna, I would, based on the, you know, being prisoner of the moment like we like to be, Brock Purdy, I think, would get the nod for me. What about you? 
Uh, yeah, I have to go with Purdy just because I mean I think he's undefeated, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's looking pretty slick out there. Uh, for, especially for a guy who is Mr. Irrelevant, um, and uh, he's making it look seamless. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodies, snapbacks, graphic tees, accessories, and more. Season 3 merch is up now. Get it while you can. Go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women. That's fckclout.com. But the quarterback play was an issue for the Ravens over the weekend. They were eliminated by the Bengals in a surprisingly close game. Uh, Ravens quarterback Tyler Huntley coughed up the ball on the two-yard line, leading to a 98-yard defensive touchdown for the Bengals, pretty much sealing the game. Now, here's, here's the caveat here, Z. Lamar Jackson was not present for the game. He did not travel to Cincinnati. Everyone killed Derek Carr for not finishing the regular season with the Raiders, saying he quit on his team. Why aren't more people trashing Lamar Jackson? Well, there's the element of injury. He had he is documented to be injured. Derek Carr, they just shut down. The Raiders just shut him down because they want to maximize his trade value. It's the same reason why people shit on college football players who decide, I'm not going to play in a bowl game because I'm not going to hurt my pro prospects. It's selfish, and I understand why people would be upset about that. Ultimately, it wasn't Carr's decision to be deactivated. It was his decision to step away from the team. So, that, that's a, you know, it's a fine hair to split. So right? you're you're in the you're in the camp of Lamar was hurt. He's really hurt. He could, he really couldn't play and there was no reason for him to travel with the team to support you know Huntley and all the other players that are playing in a pretty meaningful playoff game. My my argument is this. He's not good enough to play. Why am I wasting a seat on the plane? Why am I going to waste mean, a seat on the plane? He's like really like your star quarterback right it's like you think tom brady's not gonna travel to the game you think uh you think brett you think uh aaron Rodgers isn't gonna travel to the game when he if may be a hurt, week I away from playing that. i don't need you I don't I, need, but tyler huntley might have needed him right to coach him up and tell him I, I don't need you <laughs> what is lamar jackson gonna say Jackson going to say to Tyler Huntley? Like, let's analyze that. What is, when in doubt, run? You got to get the ball out oh. quicker. <laughs> you got to get the ball out run. quicker, man. <laughs> Shit, bro, I know. Don't stand on the tracks when the train's coming through. <laughs> God, a little, a little Jack Parkman for us. Ladies. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I mean, I'm a Ravens fan. And I got to be Ozzy. I'm kind of peeved that he wasn't there. Uh, right, but what are your thoughts like the next day when he's, you know, his social media presence and he's talking about family and unfinished business and uh, all of that stuff? Like, what? That's all nonsense. It, That's all nonsense. I can live without that. I'm just trying to say, like, you know, we've we've been waiting for well, like what five or six weeks for you to come back, and you're practicing. He's practicing in a limited fashion, and the reason he gave for not suiting up this past weekend was he was was not a hundred percent yet but he was close when so, will he be 100 percent? i don't when know it's, when it's time when it's time for that franchise tender and it's time for him to say i will not accept the franchise tender you trade me and you trade me now yeah i mean that's what's good that's what i mean that's if you're the i'm after that little after what just happened i'm i'm in the camp of yeah franchise his ass and then trade him you know get him stuck get him stuck that I'm serious because I mean unless it was a decision by the coaches but if you're a player I I just can't see how you wouldn't want to be there I mean they almost won the game 
They were, they were, there was a 14 point swing when Huntley fumbled the ball on the two yard line. Like, literally, like they were about to score. They didn't score. The Bengals wound up running it back, and that was the final score of the game. The Bengals played like shit. Like, the defense really came to play. The offense, the J.K. Dobbins, put the team on my back. I'll bring you to the promised land. My man, my man really came to play. And but in the crucial, in those crucial of moments, yeah. what does Tyler Huntley decide to do? Do they hand off to Dobbins? No, right. they don't. No. What they do is he tries to go over. Yeah. He's, he's still two feet short of the goal line. Yeah, that was just bad judgment. You know, that's just bad judgment. He, I think he, he thought he was closer than he was. He thought he'd be reached over. It was going to be a touchdown and I'm good. But you didn't make the line of, you didn't make the plane. So those guys knocked the ball out of your hand. Might have been better to go low. Um, but that's all in hindsight. It's not, I mean, the problem I have is, is the defense is playing so well. that If they win that game, if they beat the Bengals, they legit have a chance this weekend. Like, especially if Lamar comes back. Unless you know he's he's not coming back. I mean, that's the other part of it. It's like, maybe they know, like, he's already kind of made it clear that he he's not coming back. And that's the only, that's the only thing that I can think of is that they, both sides know he's not coming back. So we don't give a shit what you do. Like, you can come to this game. You cannot come to this game. We don't really care. Well, it's and, very clear, right? It's and if you're clear, Lamar, and if you're... Who is Lamar's if, representative? I don't even know. Himself. Yeah, so that's he's right. That's in right. the negotiation process. Yeah. So it's like, they know where he stands because he's the one saying it. It's not yeah. like, oh, my agent is not is speaking for me. I'm not... Yeah. Dude, you are your agent. So they are very crystal clear about what Lamar Jackson wants, what he expects, and what he'll stand for. So... But the like, other part is... Yeah, the, that's the other part of it. It's like, if you're Lamar, right? Mm -hmm. And you you know you're hurt, like, and even if you did recover from this knee injury, unfortunately, it behooves you not to play mm -hmm. the rest of the season because you could get hurt, and then there goes there goes everything, right? The other yeah. part is is you're thinking like, okay, I'm gonna go risk my knee this year in this one game for a team that didn't give me what I wanted in the off season. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And that's yeah, gotta be what, that's gotta be what happened. I can't, I can't, I can't picture him coming back. And I, I have to imagine that that's what happened. there. Yeah. But you know what? It, it's very interesting to me how divisive Lamar Jackson, people's opinions on Lamar Jackson, how polarizing he's become to the point where you even have members of the media, right? You have Michael Vick saying, strap a brace on and let's go. And then Robert Griffin saying no. Tweeting a picture of his leg that folded up like a, a lawn chair so because he put a brace on. to watch. Yeah, yeah. That was tough to watch because that was his career. That was, was disgusting. That was it was disgusting. And it, it was funny because, you know, I, I was manning the Twitter at Fade Route DNZ and I tweeted RG3 after he said that. After he said that, <clears throat> I tweeted him verbatim. You think the Ravens could use you right now? <laughs> the Ravens could absolutely use Robert Griffin the third right now. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like this is very difficult because you know the grass is always greener, right? That that's the thing. That's what you're risking with your with when you're Lamar Jackson. You know what you're dealing with with Harbaugh. You know what you're dealing with with this offense. You go. You're expecting Miami, but they're going to franchise and trade him. They're going to trade Lamar Jackson to the team that gives them the best offer. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up where you want to go. Like, look, think back to Brett Favre. His destination ultimately was Minnesota. Green Bay was never going to trade him to Minnesota directly. So he had to go to Siberia for a year. And that Siberia was with the New York Jets. So it's the NFL equivalent. So it's one of those things where Lamar may have to suck it up and go to a go to a place that he doesn't necessarily want to go for a year, yeah. or he's just gonna have to, you know, that that's. What well, he's looking to get. I mean, he's looking to get paid. So, I mean, he that's that's his thing. So wherever he goes, 
he ain't stepping on that field unless they give him a fat check for an extension. Right, but you also have to go to a place where there's a position available, and the place, the places where there's a position available, for the most part, are not desirable. You're looking at well, Houston. You're looking at yeah. Houston. You're looking at possibly Arizona. Okay, maybe, maybe. Now they're they're done. That that team that team is so done. They've made such poor decisions. So they they're 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 done though. So they, that's not. I mean, some people are saying that. Some people are saying New England's interested. I just don't see the fit. Like, I, I just, well, they're also, it's hard to say, right? Like, I don't see the fit now because they don't have an offensive coordinator. Yeah. Right? So, you, okay, maybe you, you bring, you modernize the offense a little bit. Maybe Lamar Jackson will work in New England, but you gotta, you gotta make some changes. You definitely have to make some changes up there. I mean, he's been linked to the Jets for forever. People are yeah. photoshopping the Jets jersey on him. Yeah. You know, he's linked to Miami forever. Yeah. I could see so, Miami doing it too. They can do it. They can do it. I mean, come on, the Tennessee Titans could do it, man. Mm-hmm. Like, there's teams that are gonna that are gonna the the Raiders and Josh McDaniels could totally do it. Like, you know, there are teams out there that are willing to cater their offense to him because of how dynamic he is. Aaron um, Rodgers retires tomorrow. I'm sure Green Bay would be on the phone. You think so? See, I don't think so because you have Jordan Love. You've got your guy. That's, That's your a guy. good one. That's your That's guy. That's a good one. That's your guy. They're not, you, you didn't want to pay Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to pony up to pay this dude. How about Seattle, man? Seattle's if they, another you know, spot. If Seattle's possible, absolutely. Seattle's That's talent. Good. Like he's got to he's, he's got to go to a place where there's talent. You got to imagine, like you said, he's got to he's gonna have to bring like Greg Knapp or somebody in that can coach his style of play. You know, it's not like he's going to like the Atlanta Falcons or the New Orleans Saints. Like you got to you got to have the the right personnel for this. And and honestly, it's a short window. If you're thinking this is like a ten year thing, man, this is you got a four or five year window. He's been hurt the last two years. And I like the guy, but I mean, you know, he's a, but, he's a good player. And the reason, another reason why he's not getting trashed the way Derek Carr got trashed is that he won an MVP. Yeah. So he's already demonstrated that he's valuable. You well, know, he's already demonstrated that he's not just 15th best in the league. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto, we really care about what's under your hood. But let's keep the quarterback talks going. I mean, you know, let's keep Wednesday quarterbacking over here. Uh, Danny Dimes and the New York Giants topped the Minnesota Vikings, which both of us have. Before the season, we were trying to figure out what the Giants were going to do with the quarterback position. Where does Danny Dimes rank among the remaining eight quarterbacks? Oh, man. That's we're a all fantastic under the question. age of 29, I believe. And I believe four, four of them were at the Manning quarterback camp. Yes. So they were, uh, you know, they were counselors. So that's pretty cool. But, um... I would say he slots in above Brock Purdy in the NFC just for the simple fact that he's done more, right? Brock Purdy's only played seven games. Like, let's not anoint him, you know, Joe Montana just yet. But I would say, right, of the guys that are left, oh, they're just, the NFC quarterbacks are vastly inferior to the AFC quarterbacks. So, any way you slice it, I can't say he's more, you know, he's more than seven. I would say he's seventh best, right? Because you have your, you have Burrow, you have Mahomes, you have Trevor Lawrence. He's got pedigree, so maybe if you want to move Trevor Lawrence down, okay, then, then that moves Daniel Jones to six. Okay, that's fine. In the, the five to six range, I think would be fair. Right? Because you have Allen Burrow. You, you taking Dak or you taking 
Hurts. Danny Dimes. I'm taking Hurts. I'm no. taking Hurts. Dimes or mm-hmm. Dak? I'm taking Dak because, like, as far you know, he's been in the moment before, and I think that he's not going to be the way Daniel Jones runs scares me sometimes. But he's an athlete. As a giant, he's an athlete. He's an athlete, but he has a tendency to leave with his head. So that, that's a problem. So that's a problem. Damn it, Daniel, get down. Slide. Learn how to slide. <laughs> slide, you know? for the love of God. I mean, he's comparable to Dak. It, it's a coin flip, really. But coin flip? Coin I would say flip. he's a coin flip. I would say he's a coin flip. Between I, the two. This is what I got. I got Pat is number one. Mm-hmm. I got Joe at two because mm-hmm. Joe got to the Super Bowl. I got Josh at three. Mm-hmm. I got Trevor at four. I got Jalen at five. I got Danny at six, Dak at seven, and Brock Purdy rounded it. Interesting. Up. I got I got Daniel ahead of Dak just this year because Danny didn't turn over the ball as much as Dak did. I think if you put Dak on the Cowboys, it's a dangerous team. I mean, if you put if you put Danny on the Cowboys, it's a dangerous team. Yeah, I'm, Dak is keeping me in the game. Dak's keeping the other team in the game. I mean, yeah, he played well against Tampa, but I mean, well, let's see how he plays this weekend. I like I, I like the way Daniel Jones is playing, and I think there's gonna be a, you know I think there's gonna be a lot more teams interested in Daniel Jones than the Giants think. You know, and I've been saying it I I've been saying it since two months ago. Don't be surprised if the Bucks go after Danny Dimes. Because he is perfect for what they're doing. He's perfect for them. You know? Because that allows, if instead of drafting a quarterback in the first round, you're going to draft a running back because you need a running back. You've already got your receivers. You need a tight end. You need to strengthen that offensive line. But, man, your division sucks. You're good to go. Well, one thing that differentiates Dak Prescott from Daniel Jones is Daniel Jones' ability to run. Yeah. He was the leading rusher this weekend. Now, that's a recipe. That's not a recipe for success. <laughs> if Daniel Jones is your leading rusher, how many times have you said that about Josh Allen? If your quarterback is your leading rusher, you got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Throwing it right back at you because I, I know that, you know, we've had this discussion a million times. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not – he was the leading rusher this past weekend, but he's not always. I mean, they do have – I mean, Saquon Barkley had a really good game. Um, I think the, the other part is the more I think about it, <coughs> I do think, think the Giants are going to have a problem because this season – for Daniel Jones might just be an outlier. You know? This could be... He could be peaking this year. So let's see, like, the best case scenario is you win the Super Bowl. I mean, if you win the Super Bowl, you really bring Daniel Jones back? Do you think that's going to happen again? Is he going to fill Sims this thing? Like, yeah, that's the problem. Like, I I don't I know... Think... I don't know if this year was an outlier. There, You know, and I don't know if what he's doing can be replicated. Every, you know, he doesn't... Ha- I get you know, we had Danny, Danny Butler on here last week. He's saying, you know, he doesn't have any weapons, and look what he's doing. It's like, okay, but when he gets weapons, is he gonna is he gonna do better? Is he gonna do the same? Like, what's gonna happen? I don't know. Nobody knows. How can anybody possibly know? We can't. But what the one thing that trends in the right direction that you do like is that he has drastically cut down on his interceptions. Yeah. Sure. 12 to 10, 10 to 7, and then 7 to 5. So the decision making seems to be better. Like that that seems to indicate that he's trending in the right direction. Now, to be fair, he went from 24 touchdowns to 11 to 10 to 15. Now, how much of that is Butler's point? How much of that is Danny's point? That they haven't had anybody around him. And the guy that they paid to be around him 
is Kenny Galladay, and he finally scored his first touchdown in Week 18 in some meaningless garbage time. So, I can't, in good conscience, give him a long-term contract. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know. You know, right, I right. am not sold. No. And I'm, I've been a Giant fan my entire life. Like, I appreciate what Daniel Jones is doing this year. I appreciate that he has made a great deal of progress. I'm not sold yet. And what is, what a playoff run, like, sell me on it a little bit more? Maybe, but I'm not going, I'm not making the extreme long-term investment. Like, the, the most I would go is four years. At least 25 that takes him to age 29. That gives you plenty of time to see what he is. He's still 10 games under 500 as a quarterback. Yeah, quarterback isn't a, team st- isn't a you know, statistic. Whatever. Winning isn't a quarterback statistic. Whatever. Don't give me that. It's on the record. It's on his record. He was the quarterback for these games. So, I need to, I need to see more. Because, frankly, what we've seen of him, it's confusing. It's definitely confusing and like we were saying his picks have gone down his sacks have gone way up so he went from 38 to 45 down to 22 back up to 44 (laughs) so a lot of that is you know some of it is the offensive line which is trash or has been trash this year it's been better but it was trash now he's also in an offense where he's being asked to escape the pocket for him. So, if they're going to continue that, that number is going to continue to climb. And, like, I don't know if he's going to... He's a big, strong kid, but everybody has a bump card. And once you... Once your bump card is hit, and you can't take anymore, like, physically, you're just done. You're just done. Well, believe- but, you know, let's, let's talk about the Vikings for a second here. Like, we all had that we, I think unanimously, we had that. You know, the lovely Rita Sanchez had that. DB had that. A lot of the pundits had that. How bad of a look is that for the Vikings? That the Giants went into their house and manhandled them the way they did. I think it was expected. You know, I really do. I mean, they they were playing in close games all season one score games I think they were undefeated or only had one loss in one score games and they had some nice runs but I mean their Dexter Lawrence just dominated the def- the offensive line for the Vikings and he forced very poor decisions by Kirk Cousins especially the last play of the game where he throws a three yard out when he needs ten yards um so it was expected. I mean, the only thing I'm trying to figure out with the Vikings is, is like, where do you go from here? Mm. Like, you won the division. You had a home playoff game. You had, you know, a wild card team come in and beat you, a team that you barely beat the first time you played them. You've got the receiver. You got the you got the quarterback. You've got the running back. Your defense is terrible. Is that what you're going to do? You're going to beef up the <coughs> defense and you think it's all going to be hunky-dory? I just don't think it's the answer. I don't know I don't know where you go from here. I don't know how you get better. Well, I think you need to invest in that defense. I think you need to make it on par with that offense because that offense played, you know? And Ed, Donatel, strong... Ed Donatel is a great guy, good friend of mine, a defensive coordinator of the Vikings. I don't put it all on him. No, no, I'm not saying it's the scheme. Players play, coach is coach. I'm not saying it's the scheme. What I'm saying is is that you need more talented players on the roster. You need more talented players over on that side of the ball. Invest on that side the way you invested on the offensive side. Clearly, Kevin O'Connell wants to outscore, right? He wants to... He wants to be like the old Vikings teams with, you know, Chris Carter and Randy Moss. And what they win. Exactly. Well, yeah, Everybody, Swadoosh. Swadoosh. 
and the last time the Vikings and the Giants played each other in a playoff game, the Vikings got whooped so 41, 41 nothing. nothing right? yeah. 41 nothing with those two vaunted wideouts. You can't be an imbalanced football team. And they're just not good enough on defense. They're just not good enough. So they need to reinvest in the draft. If they can get somebody, if they can get a middle linebacker or if they can get an additional like pass rush, they, they just need more. And they're not quite there yet. I mean, they have the no hunters there. Patrick Peterson, Dalvin Tomlinson, Darius Smith, Harrison Smith. You have guys, but you need more. Thankfully for them, they're in a they're in a division where Green Bay's falling apart, Chicago is falling apart, and the only rival you're going to have is the Lions, right? At least that's how it looks right now. The Lions can lie in at any moment. It's what they do. Like, the Lions can fall apart at the drop of a hat. Historically, it's what they've done. So, they are on the precipice of being a consistent contender. And they just need more on that side of football. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave. From the classic OB, to Dutch Apple, to Campfire S'mores, and many more. Check out their website, SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live, and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow on Instagram and Facebook too at SweetLifeBrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them D&Z sent you. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co. Because there's always room for a brownie. Believe it or not, we're going to get away from football for a second. There are other sports going on, including basketball. We are actually more than halfway through the NBA season. Crazy as that sounds. Who has been your MVP so far? Yeah, you know, this, uh, believe it or not, I came up with a couple of memes and kind of was just looking at their stats and looking back and forth, but that might, my answer might surprise you. I'm going to go with the Joker. Mm. Um, he's, he's only averaging 25 points per game, but he's shooting over 60% from the field, 37% from three. And he's second in the league with 11 rebounds per game. And I think he has something like nine nine assists a game. And then I ha- behind him, second would be Luka, third would be Giannis, and fourth would be Tatum. Tatum's having a good season. Boston's having a good season. He's just shoot- His shooting percentage is not very good. I mean, they're all great choices. You really can't... Uh... You really can't go wrong with any of them, especially the way, like... Luca is carrying his team in Dallas and the way Giannis always seems to rise to the top of Milwaukee. I mean, we got to see what's going to happen, of course, throughout the, the year. John Morant would always be a good option. If Brooklyn somehow, like... If Brooklyn somehow writes the ship and, you know, is able to play to their potential right now, they're 27 and 16, but, you know, that's, they're supposed to be where the Celtics are based on the talent assembly, right? Got your Kyrie, got your Simmons, got your KD. They're supposed to be up there. They're supposed to be where the Bucks are. They're just kind of like, eh, right now. They're in the conversation with the Sixers and Cavaliers. Eh, okay. So KD can be an outside an outside uh, candidate. 
Jokic is a great choice. You know, 24.7 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, 9 assists per game. He's got the pedigree, right? He is... He is the prototypical big man now. And the Nuggets are 31 and 13. Best player on the winning team. Most valuable. They take Joker off that team. What are they? Same thing with John Morant with Memphis. Oh, yeah. You know. 30 and 13, right? They're, they are right up there, neck and neck. You take John Morant. You figure last year's an aberration, right? They played... Statistically, they had a better record with John Morant off than they did on. But when the lights are on brightest, you want your best players out there. And John Morant is the best player on that team by far. And, you know, like those are great. I mean, Tatum is always a great choice. Just, again, best player on the best team. If you're going to twist my arm... And it's going to change from, you know, day to day, week for week, because we're not done yet. You know, we're at the halfway point. But if you're looking at that, if you're looking at that, I would probably go with Giannis because he still has less help than some of the other guys. Right. I would still, I would still argue that Giannis is still a one man show. You know, and he's doing what he needs to do. He's averaging 31.6, 11, and 5. And, you know, multiple 40 plus point games. His shooting percentage is pretty bad, isn't it? Like from three? Yeah, I mean, from, from three, but three aren't really his game. You know? He takes him, though. Is he he takes five him. Five a game, four a game? He takes him. He shouldn't be. You know, some, you know they got to get in his head about that. Like, he. He needs to drive to the basket. That's where he's most effective. He is... He is by far the most... One of the most physical specimens in terms of attacking the rim. Why would you neuter yourself by taking threes? It's like Carl Anthony Towns was taking threes. Why? Like, why are you doing that? I, I don't understand that. Anthony Davis was taking threes. Why? You're dominant down low. Go be down low. Not everybody needs to take three. Like, that's... It's just short-sighted. It's absolutely short-sighted. And, you know, the free-throw shooting is always... It's the free-throw shooting with Giannis. You know, he's... It's constantly an issue. But... He definitely is capable of staying up there. And, you know... I think that by the end of the year, it's going to be a two-horse race. Him and John Murray. But as of right now, Jokic is there. You got some other, you know, some other dark horses. But by the end of the year, those two guys are going to stand head and shoulders above the rest of the candidates. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. And speaking of standing head and shoulders above the other candidates, I don't know if you knew this, but Shohei Otani is a free agent next year, right? You know, the Japanese Babe Ruth, DH, right-hand pitcher. I think I, heard that, I think I heard about that on our show. Does that sound familiar? I think I think we, I think we might have mentioned that story. Big. Yeah. But uh, now that Aaron Judge is off the market, he's back in the Bronx. The big-name free agents have new homes for the most part. You know, uh, Mr. Bauer got released, so he will see uh, the over... 
the drama that unfolds with that and see if any team is crazy enough to take on that that drama. But um, the big fish are pretty much off the table, right? The big fish are out of the water and they're in the boat. So we're thinking to next year. Otani's a free agent. GMs are already speculating and they're already estimating that he's worth $500 million and he can be offered $500 million bucks. Is Otani worthy of being the first $500 million player? And do you see him getting that level of contract? I do. I mean, for me, 100%. <coughs> for me, he was the MVP last year. A guy that can pitch, he can hit for power, loves the game, wants to win. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask of him. He's easily the number one, two, or three starter on certain teams. It's not like he's just up there throwing fastballs. He's got no movement and he can't pitch. He can't get pitch. He can hit bombs. He changes the games on both sides of the field. On, on, on all, all, all angles of the field. Nobody else in the league can do what he does. And you got to imagine with the moves that Boston's been making the last two years, you got to think that they're in play. We know your Mets are in play. You got to think that the Cubs or the White Sox are going to try to go for this guy too. I mean... He, he's, a, he's a specimen. He's a spectacle. And he he brings more to the table than any other free agent has in a long time. Well, as we've noted several times on this podcast, Shohei Otani's two players in one. Right? He's a prolific hitter. He's a slugger. And then he, when he's on... And when he's healthy, he's one of the more dominant pitchers in the league. When you're looking at highest paid pitcher, right? You're looking at a guy like Garrett Cole. And then you're looking at one of the highest play, highest paid position players, Juan Soto, right? You're looking at Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge. You're looking northwards. Right when you have individual talent like they do, north of three hundred million dollars, you put them together. I'm not going five hundred. I'm thinking it's going six and a quarter. Because he's so prolific, right? Because he's so unique. Because he is a slugger and he's a pitcher simultaneously. Guy's a 10 war, for Christ's sake, right? He's a career, <laughs> yeah, career 25 war. Now, yes, war, we know, we, we know about war, but he already has 127 career homers stateside. That's pretty impressive. 267 career batting average here, not great, but you know, he plays. It translates. He is as advertised. Now, the teams who he goes to, that becomes a question. Now, yes, the Mets are going to be in on him. The Mets are going to be in on him hard. I would think that maybe the Red Sox, I don't know necessarily... Right. We'll see. We'll see what their plan is, because it doesn't look like they know what they're doing. <laughs> so, you know, we're gonna strip it all down, but we're gonna assign Trevor Story while we're at it. Whatever. Yeah. Well, the Baltimore Orioles could be in on him. Can you imagine Shohei Otani and Camden Yards? That 34 could turn into 54, 64 because of that porch in, in right field. That could work. The Blue Jays, you can never count out the Blue Jays, right? Have money, will spend, want to knock the Yankees off of their perch. National League-wise, you figure the Giants have to throw a boatload of dough at this guy just to get the egg off their face of missing out on Judge and missing out on Correa. Like, they would have to 
overcompensate for this offseason by going after the biggest fish. It would be Barry Bonds 2.0 for them. It could, it's a franchise changer. It's definitely a franchise changer because you now, adding Shohei Otani, you're back in the conversation more seriously with the Dodgers, with the Padres, with the Mets. Even the Braves. The Braves are young and hungry. Like you're the Giants sign Shohei Otani, they now can compete. Cubs maybe. The Cubs maybe. I don't know necessarily. I mean, it's possible, but I'm not sure they're there yet. And a team you can never, ever, ever count out. Never, ever. Is the Seattle Mariners. The Seattle Mariners, the one thing you know for sure is that nothing is for sure. That is what Jerry Depoto has pretty much demonstrated his, in his entire tenure as Mariner GM. You think you know what's going on, then all of a sudden he'll just go and do something crazy. He's, he's got guts. He's got balls. And that that's dangerous for the other teams in the league. He already ponied up for Robinson Cano once. Like, he's shown he can do it. If you're giving, if you're, you know, if you're asking me to put my fandom aside, right? Love the Mets. Would love to have Shohei Otani on the Mets. But if I'm putting fandom aside, I gotta say, he's gotta stay on the West Coast. He's gotta, he's gotta be the guy that takes Seattle over the hump. Or he's got to be the guy that rejuvenates San Francisco. And like, he's going to, it's going to be as close to a blank check as you can imagine. For all the grill masters, green thumbers, home repair heroes, and DIY aficionados in the Richmond, Virginia area, if you're looking for a personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience, look no further than Thacker Ace Hardware in Colonial Heights, Virginia. Owner Don Rackley and his team of local experts have everything you need to tackle all of your home projects. I'm talking paints by Benjamin Moore and Clark in Kensington, power tools by Craftsman and Milwaukee, electrical, plumbing, hardware, and let's not miss the grill. Weber. Big Green Egg, Traeger, Blackstone, top shelf, amazing. And for all you green thumbers, their nursery department is fantastic. Give them a call today, 804-766-4223, or stop by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. That's 804-766-4223, or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. Thacker Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Fair or foul? Judging the more messed up moments of the week. All right, boys and girls. Here's how it goes. We have our state. And it's either fair or foul. Fair or foul. Number one, LeBron James likely passing Kareem on the all-time scoring list this season. I mean, yeah, it's going to happen. Um, I think it's fair. I mean, for the amount of years he's been playing basketball and he's in the league, he should be in top five, right? I mean, but it's very impressive that he's doing it in less games. But how about Kareem? Having the all-time being the, lead, the all-time leading scorer, hitting only one three-pointer—that's pretty impressive. So yeah, huh. I'm gonna say fair. I mean, I'm going fair as well, just from the simple fact that LeBron's played 1,400 games in his career, right? He's logged almost 54,000 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like that's insane. 
when you think about that. It's not a it's it's a prolific stat. He's been a prolific scorer his entire career. He's outside of that one year with the Lakers, he's been relatively durable. I would say that it's more than fair that he reaches that crowning achievement. Now, when you look at the remainder of the top five, right? It's Karl Malone, Kobe, and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan played almost 1,500 games, almost 500 games less than Kareem. So he played almost 300 games less than LeBron. It's very interesting to me how this scoring mark just really underscores how more prolific Michael Jordan was because he did it and he also did this while taking time off to go play baseball, right? He retired. He was playing for the shitty Wizards at one point. So the one thing about LeBron is that he's been here the entire time. So kudos to him. It's well-earned, well-deserved. And he's in he is in the upper echelon of players, right? He is in the pantheon. He has done that and he has earned every bit of the respect that he's going to get in his career. Fair or foul. Number two, Connor McDavid is the best scorer in the NHL. I'm going foul on this. I, I'm, my guy's OV, man. I know he only, he has eight less goals this year than Connor McDavid, but man, he puts it in the net better than anybody in the league. He's a, he's a Stanley Cup champion. He's an MVP. I'm sticking with OV. No love for Tage Thompson from Buffalo? Nah. nah. 32 goals out of nowhere. 32 goal season. Test him for steroids. <laughs> I gotta say it's fair. I have to say it's fair right now. When you're looking at talent level, and you're looking at creativity, and you're looking at just sheer skill, Connor McDavid is the most skilled player in the NHL. He's at the height of his he's at the height of his talent. Right? He's at the peak. He's 26. Ovi, 37 years old, been great for the game. He's on the other side of his prime. Now you have other young guns, right? You have like Jack Hughes, you have Zach Hyman has 21 goals this year. Like that's surprising to me. You have, <coughs> you know, your stalwarts like your John Tavares's, but Cole Caulfield of the of the uh, Canadian. Like it's a mishmash this year. You're a mishmash. Mm. <laughs> but none of them can match Connor McDavid in terms of skill. Not even Dreisaitl, his teammate. You know, the problem with McDavid is that they haven't done anything in the postseason. Right? There's no doubt. You know, he already has 277 career goals for his career. He already has over 500 assists. He's a plus 96. <laughs> he's not a... He's not... Like he's this is these are his career numbers. He is <clears throat> right. He's no slouch. Now I understand where you're coming from. Right? We we love the the older guard, but in terms of the pure game, it's Connor McDavid right now. And 
in the future, maybe it's a guy like Jason Robertson. Maybe it's a guy like Jack Hughes. Maybe it's a guy like Cole Caulfield. I mean, Braden Point is only 26. So, you know, he's the same age as McDavid. Maybe Braden Point kind of makes a turn. But as of right now, in this moment, stud. Absolute stud. Fair or foul, electronic strike zones being implemented in the minor leagues. Oh, man, it's 100% fair. I just, the issue, I mean, in the minor leagues, pumps really can't complain or argue about this. Um, But when it comes to the major league level, the umpire's union is pretty strong. So I'm not sure... I'm not sure how the evolution is going to happen, right? Because if you don't have, if you have the automatic strike zone in the minor leagues, then you're not able to develop pumps to come up to the major leagues eventually. So I'm not sure how this works. And also, I, I don't, you know, the technology, I'm not sure how it's going to be adjusted because, right, you know, the, the strike zone changes with every batter. Mm-hmm. There's no real, like, consistent strike zone. Like, this is the strike zone. Like, there's a different strike zone for Altuve than there is for Judge. Now, I do like the idea of being able to see in real time if something's a ball or a strike. I mean, it's it's done wonders for the game of tennis. There's no arguing. You can't argue it. It comes up on the screen. Everybody in the arena can see if it's in or out. So that part is the best. It's going to eliminate arguing, but I just don't know how it's going to escalate and make it to the major league level. Angel Hernandez, this one's for you. I am going to say it's totally fair. Major league umpires don't have a leg to stand on. Yes, it's going to cost umps jobs. It's going to cost the bad umps jobs. It's not going to... It's not going to... It's not going to cost the ump that is routinely at around 98% accuracy. It's going to cost the C.B. Buckner. It's going to cost the Angel Hernandez's. It's going to cost the Eric Gregg. It's going to cost the guys who clearly are just trying to get out of there because they have a reservation. And they're going to call anything a strike. Now, there needs to be some kinks worked out of the system, and that's why they're doing it in AAA. That's why they did it in you know the Atlantic League. They've done it before to try and iron out the system. Once they get it figured out, I can imagine it's going to be rolled out very quickly, and it's going to be it's going to be effective. Now. I would like to know how they're going to deal with this in event of a tech breakdown. Like, that's another thing. Like, we're talking about, you know, the human element of it. Okay, it's, it's, you know, baseball, it's all about the human element. But what are you going to do the moment that something malfunctions? Yeah, but I don't know. Is it, does that happen in tennis? I've never heard of it having an issue. It doesn't happen in tennis, to the best of my knowledge, but you need to be prepared for all, you need to be prepared for all that, all of contingencies. You need to have this thing thoroughly done. Now, it's part of the reason why Quest Tech was looked apart, was looked down on, right? You have the human element combined with the automatic. going fully automatic like there's still some things that you need to work on and how is it going to be implemented like you said it's a question mark because Jose Altuve is up to his letters or Aaron Judge's belt you're right about that it will eliminate the questionable strikes like balls breaking around the corner that are called strikes. It'll call consistently the high strikes. 
So in that regard, it'll be good. But you need a uniform implementation. You need to be able to, you know, you still need to be able to adjust this and need to be able to figure out all of all of the little bugs before this goes. But it's a it's been a long time coming for Major League Baseball. Eventually they'll get to the point where they will be able to do fair foul on the line. Which is kind of surprising that they don't do that already considering if I, it wouldn't it's basically the Hawkeye technology from tennis. You would think that they would implement that, but um, it's definitely something that will be welcomed by fans. It'll be welcomed by players because, frankly, like it'll a strike will be a strike will be a strike. Like you'll finally have some level of consistency. You'll finally have some level of. You will finally have some level level of uniformity. So it's one of those things that we're going to see how it works. It's coming. Accept it. I I've begrudgingly given over to the fact that more tech is coming, less tech is not coming. So. If you get if it gets the call right, it gets the call right. That's all you can say. You can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Pop Stars, located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Pop Stars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio, quickly expanding. In person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to westchesterpopstars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester Pop Stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, or Google. The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. Here's how it goes. We put up a poll on our Twitter account, at FadeRoutDNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. And the winner of said vote gets the coveted-ass trophy and... A shout out on this here show. And do you know who took home the coveted ass trophy last week, D? I do not. The Houston Texans. The Houston Texans for firing Lovey Smith when he was trying to win. Fuck them win. Fuck them win. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees for Legend Superstar of the Week, D? First up, and I know he's on your list too, is Brett Maher. <coughs> Missed four extra points against the Bucks after being money all season. Maher, do better. Just do better. Next up, I got Rafa Nadal. Losing in straight sets to the number 59 player in the world. You gotta, you gotta get at least one set off of this guy. You're like the best player in the world. I think you're ranked number one. You can't be losing to 59. Nadal, do better. Just do better. And last but not least, your favorite quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Hmm. He was quoted as saying if he was in the right situation, he would win league MVP again. Give me a break, man. Like, of course everybody in the right situation would be great. It's, it's being able to rise above. Come on, man. 
Rodgers, do better. That's my just thought do... on that. That's my <laughs> thought on Aaron Rodgers right there. Rodgers. Are you kidding me with that? Do, do better. Just do better. What do you I, got, I, ju- I jumped the gun, but it warranted it, it warranted a toilet flush. Are you, <laughs> are you fucking kidding me with that? <laughs> Like, dude, in anybody. the right situation. Yeah. The right situ- Are you shitting me, bro? If I was in the right situation, I'd win the lotto tomorrow. Like, what right. are you it- talking about, man? That's asinine. Like, he is just... He's so delusional sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what like he the- was thinking. Like, for the lack of a better term, delusional. <laughs> yeah, I- I'll-, I'll give you that one. So, for me, like, I'm starting with Kirk Cousins. Fourth and fourth and eight, game on the line. <laughs> a two yard dump off to TJ Hawkinson. Go, you got TJ, this. You go. got this. Go, go, go. you got go. this. Go. I'm not gonna throw a block for you, but go, go, go. go. You got this. I'm gonna pray for you, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> you are my alleged superstar of the week, Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa. That critical, critical, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Costing the Chargers. Valuable field position. Chargers are going to charge her. That's what they did. Right? They snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Because they made Trevor Lawrence look like shit. But Joey Bosa, you put them in position to kick the game-winning field goal because you were childish, you were petty, and after the game, insinuating that somehow this is on the refs because they were targeting you. And like, yeah, we got that asshole. Get your head out of your asshole, Joey. Joey Bosa, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And last but not least, Mike McDaniel. Clock management is not your thing, Mike. The play clock is 40 seconds in the NFL. Miami was averaging 56 seconds per play call. So it took them 56 seconds to get into some sort of play. That's on coaching. Yes, you have a rookie quarterback, but guess what, dude? He can hear you. You're not like using cards. You're not using hand signals. You're not using flags. You're literally, that thing on your face is a microphone. You're talking into a headset and it's relaying into the quarterback's head, right into his ears. Clock management is a problem. And then appearing to just start ripping vapes on the sideline. <laughs> Hey, there's this, there are a couple shots where it's clear as day. Like, you are putting something in your mouth and you are, you know, you are ripping something. Now, either you're, I get it. Being an NFL head coach is stressful. But don't do that on the sideline, man. Come on. It's unprofessional and it looks like you can't handle the job. It looks like you're falling and cracking under the pressure. Mike McDaniel, you are my alleged superstar of the week. An honorable mention to the Tottenham fan who went and kicked Aaron Ramsdale this Sunday during the Premier League. Never, ever, 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 did I say ever, is it okay for a fan to put their hands or their feet on a player? Now, hopefully this guy got arrested. There was a report that he did. But Tottenham Spurs fan who decided to kick Aaron Ramsdale, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our Twitter page at FadeRouteDNZ and vote and vote and vote and vote. And for our nominee. Just do better, boys. Just do better.
Looking to break into broadcast media, web development, social media marketing, or filmmaking? Then CSB is the program for you. From day one, you'll be trained hands-on by industry pros like friend of the show Rob Adams, whose goal is to get you trained and get you working in months, not years. CSB offers 8- and 16-week programs in small class sizes designed to give you the personalized attention you need. If you can make it in person, there are five East Coast locations. If you can't, they offer virtual classes too. How great is that? And once you graduate, you become part of the alumni network that gets you to the front of the line. Trust me, I'm going to love myself. Go to GoCSB.com today, request more info, set up a studio tour, and who knows, you may very well be on your way to a career in broadcast media. That's GoCSB.com and tell them Z sent you. GoCSB.com. Let's run the option and give you our picks for the week. It is the option for the NFL division round. Let's see what you guys got. The games are getting fewer. The talent is getting more and more concentrated the stakes are getting high here we go Saturday 4.30pm the Jacksonville Jaguars go into Arrowhead to take on the Kansas City Chiefs Chiefs how about them Chiefs Trevor Lawrence is trying to make a late run for alleged superstar, saying that he's never, he doesn't think Arrowhead will measure up to what he heard noise wise in Jacksonville last week. Bro, you know not what you speak. So just chill with statements like that. Saturday night's main event the New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. My head is saying Eagles. My heart is saying Giants. I'm going with my heart. I'm taking the Giants. It's going to be a close game. Daniel Jones is going to play well. Jalen Hurts did not impress me in his return. They had an additional week off, so... They're still most likely rusty. We're going to see what the Eagles are made out of. The Giants are showing it. It's time for the Eagles to put up or shut up. Giants by three. Sunday, 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 3 p.m. The Cincinnati Bengals at the Buffalo Bills. Bengals. Yeah, I'm going with the Bengals, too. I don't like what I saw out of the Bills. Josh Allen is playing pretty darn reckless with the football. It's one thing to be... It's one thing to be aggressive. It's another thing to be reckless. And he's going into that Brett Favre reckless territory. He's going into that Matthew Stafford reckless territory. I think... It's going to be one too many, and the Bengals take it home. Your Sunday night special, 6.30 p.m., the Dallas Cowboys at the San Francisco 49ers. It is the primetime Dion Bowl. Dallas. Really? Really? I'm going to take the Niners. Stronger defense better run game Purdy's not even going to have to be a factor Cowboys are going to try and make Purdy a factor I don't think it's going to happen the Niners are going to try and make Dak a factor and that's sure shit going to happen Dak is going to Dak Purdy will be a non-factor 
Niners win by 10. This has been the Freight Route with DNC. Thanks for tuning in tonight. You catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on the Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go around, but we'll talk to you next week. want to get on the action we want to hear from you hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com slide in our dms on ig at fade route podcast drop us a dm on twitter at fade route dnz comment on our youtube channel the fade route with dnz questions comments picks segment suggestions you name it we want to hear from you get at us in crowd